Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Melton Mowbray. He's 21 years old, stands six feet two inches tall, and weighed in at 78 kilos. He fights out of hard knocks, and tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Kyle. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Leicester. He's 16 years old, stands six feet tall, and weighed in at 84 kilos. He fights out of First Legion and Team Wallet. And tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Josh McManus. So we move on to a fantastic middleweight bout. Al Robinson in the black trunks with a red motif on them. And Josh McManus also in the black trunks with a red stripe. We can see Jim Wallhead in the corner of Josh McManus there. Obviously coming from a fantastic camp. Yeah, McManus from the First Legion and Team Wallhead. So he's, he's, actually got his, uh, he's actually got his dad, Jamie McManus, in the corner as well as Jimmy Wallhead. And uh, Robinson again from Hard Knock, so he's uh, got Simon Hull, James Harrell in his corner. So, a load of experience in the corners, but we're not interested in that, we're interested in what's going on in the cage right now. McManus, he's only 16, he's a junior. He is a junior. Bags of confidence, he's got his heart set on a successful career in MMA. What a fantastic platform for him to fight here, he's landing those leg kicks quite nicely. I've seen McManus at the uh, MMA League. He's impressed me. He's cool, calm, collected. And, and Robinson is, is, is hyped. I mean, look at the speed and the ferocity of him. He's, he's ready to do some damage tonight. Robinson, a very rangy middleweight. One of the first fights we've seen on the card so far. Obviously, under the, the no headshot rules. A nice combination of kicks there where the fighters have been content to stand up. Most fighters we've seen so far have gone to the ground quite quickly. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you, and it's, it's a good game plan to have, but we might see something different here. Robinson is clearly happy to stand and trade. And McManus, for me, the aggression that he's coming forward. I think it's clearly obvious that it won't be too long before we see this lad fighting with headshots. Seems very confident. No, absolutely not. I mean, let's not forget Robinson's from Hard Knocks, which is uh, originally a stand-up gym, uh, run by Paul Butlin, so... Very high pedigree in, in stand-up conditioning as well. A nice hook to the body there. So we go to the clinch, so McManus instigates the clinch, but Robinson's got the underhooks. Toe stomps from McManus. Robinson nearly tips the cage over there, pushing McManus into the corner panel. McManus still looking to, to land those toe stomps. And Robinson, as we see the taller man, would obviously have more success in the clinch. Not by much, but the physically stronger fighter for me. Well, what about this is? I mean, both fighters, like I say, the first one we've had so far where neither man's been thinking takedown. It is interesting because you know, Josh, Josh has uh, fought at the league before, which is very similar rules. Some nice body shots coming in from both fighters. Very even first round. As we can see the welt in on McManus on his left-hand side there, just, just above the waist from some of those kicks. Oh yeah, that's, that's a beauty. That's from first-hand experience. They do hurt. We go to the end of the rounds. In a very close first round as both the corners come in. And the crowd really appreciate this one so far, Ben. All right, so we're ready to go for round two, and both fighters look as though they're ready to go for round one again, Ben. This is pretty impressive for the middleweights. Great first round all on the feet. It's been Carl Robinson in the black venom trunks against Josh McManus in the black and red shorts. Snapping those jabs out to the body. There's a nice leg kick. Robinson likes those hooks to the body. It does, they're very effective, very powerful as well. You feel them landing cage side. 
was another nice shot. And now the fighters clinch up. And look at that clinch. That was a beautiful clinch from McManus straight into a guillotine. Standing guillotine and fires a knee to the body. And from Robinson's point of view, that's going to have told him something. That in that clinch position, McManus is dangerous and he is very strong. He is dangerous. I mean, he's a uh, great as he BJJ. I think he's a blue belt in BJJ. You know, so he's no slouch on the ground. Like I said, I've seen him before. That was a bit of a high shot there from Robinson. You get bounced off McManus's gloves. That was a nice body kick. That was beautiful. That was straight out of a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, that one. A body kick of his own, and now we've got the clinch fish, and there's those knees. There's and the takedown. Pick up and take down. Beautiful stuff, and the crowd really appreciate that. Jamie McManus nearly took off off the floor there, looking in the corner. He was going to get in the ring with his son. So, McManus now looking to pass into Mount. How long has he got? We are halfway through round two. His head's free. Robinson had a loose guillotine. From McManus's point of view, that was a very clever thing to do. Obviously, the first round going maybe the way that the second was. And now we see the Mount position. That's but on, under these rules, it's a really difficult position to be in because there's very little you can actually go for with the no headshots to the floor. Going for submissions does open you up to get a reverse like what's hand here. No, that's right. And we're back standing with a loose armbar Kimura attempt there from McManus and Robertson took advantage of a little mistake and he's out. He is out, he is stood up and he's firing shots. It always impresses me. McManus is just so lackadaisical. He has not got a care in the world. For a 16-year-old junior, that's really impressive. It's incredible. He could be walking to the shops at this point. His facial expressions really haven't changed throughout the bout. And man, he blocked that one on his forearm. He's got to be careful of those knees. I mean, he's, he's, he's no slouch, but you're right. It does look like he's just wandering to the shops. What shall I get? Shall I get some milk? I need some cornflakes. There's some nice kicks coming in from McManus. Look at the range Robinson's got, though. It's solid jab coming out. Double that jab up and then came underneath to the body. I like that. Well, there's the He's going for the pickup again. He's got to be careful of falling into the guillotine. Oh, this is dangerous. I think he's going to survive it. And he got and himself he... out just before. Nice last-ditch effort there from Robinson, showing that he's not only a striker. Third and final round of this entertaining middleweight contest. And again, Ben, both fighters look like they did at the beginning of round one. The testament to the conditioning of both these fighters who've come in and engaged in a practically 95% kickboxing bout, really. There's Pretty been that much. one big takedown from Amanis with a bit of action on the ground. Yeah, we can see Robinson landing the outside kick. McManus is not happy with that. But look how quick Robinson sunk that guillotine in. He sunk it in. But what McManus has done is gone straight to the side control position where it's a lot harder for that, that submission to be finished. It's a matter of time for me before he pops his head out of this. Yeah, like I said earlier, when we saw this in one of the other fights, there was a really nice reversal choke. McManus, if he stuck his right arm underneath Robinson's head, doesn't matter now because he's out. I will keep my eye on that. I would like to see someone do that tonight. Personal request, guys, please. Thank you. I'm pushing through there. He's got that arm isolated, but from a manager's point of view, he's really stuck as to what he can do. I mean, he's looking like he's going to set the arm bar up. I think it's arm bar o'clock, Ben. I mean, obviously, maybe if he could step over and go from a top triangle, well, that's a risk. Surely, if he can maintain this position quite early in this round so I mean he has got a lot of time to work yeah see I'm not a fan of the armbar personally because it does put you in a bad position you've got to be very confident in your technique at that point but under these rules there's very few things that you can actually go for from the mount position other than maybe landing shots to the body there it is there's the armbar I knew it was armbar clock he's got to go to the chest and he's got it Robinson's defending very, very well. Very well, but he's got to be careful. That is a tied armbar. He's trying to get out of it. Referee Leon Roberts, very experienced, looking right into his man. Look at McManus, he is arching back. That is unbelievable. That is a tight, tight, tight armbar. But I think he's managed to step over 
There's incredible pressure on that joint. That is a fantastic escape attempt there by Robinson. If he pulls this off, I will be seriously impressed. That is an unbelievable display of heart for a fighter at this level. That's up there with the, uh, the great Dan Hardy armbar escape, I think, for me. Unbelievable that he managed to get through that. Now he's in a good position. Uh -oh. We're looking for the triangle choke. He's got that sunk. He has got that choke sunk And an place. arm bar. And gone back to that arm. Robinson still striking. There we go. And and the tap. He's got it. He's got it. What a beautiful finish. And who'd have thought for a fighter like McManus who was so happy standing up and trading that when the fight got to the floor he was able to put on a real submission clinic from the top. Absolutely. That was chalk and cheese from round one to round three and that's what we like. After two minutes and 34 seconds of round three, your winner due to a tap out by Armbar from the red corner, Josh McManus. Let's hear it for a very gallant runner-up, Kyle Robinson.